That's what makes McPherson so dangerous. Uh, he, just, he rolls out. You get a little play action there. He rolls out, calls the screen, sets up the screen to Torrance Washington, the fullback, and uh, hits him with a good pass, and he picks up good yardage, gets the first down. Now McPherson right up to the line. It looked like they would run a quick play, but now they're set. Once again, looking to throw. Now he's being flushed out, and he's going to take off, and he's dangerous. Big pickup and pushed out of bounds after a gain of about 18. Now that's the danger for Manatee. You could drop back like they did on that play to try to guard those trio of receivers, but then you're going to have A.D. McPherson take off on you. I really believe the only way, Robert Keston's the guy that makes the stop on him. I think the only way the Manatee defense will stop him is to put pressure on him. If you drop back and play too soft, this guy can really pick you apart. We watched that in St. Thomas Aquinas game. Looking to throw again, looking to go deep, wide open. Caught for a touchdown. Fred Spad in the end zone. Touch football, we gotta go after him. Right. Looking to throw, lobs it up left side. He's got it. Oh, oh, oh what a catch. Jaworski Pollock with a nice one. He lobbed it up there at Jaworski. First mistake the Seminoles have made other than the penalties tonight. Second down, now McPherson back at QB, looking up the middle, throws, touchdown. Crossing the middle for the touchdown is Travis Lim. Here on the Blake Medical Center scoreboard. Here's the replay of the play, yeah. Charlie. Well, he just, he's got uh, tri uh, Lip right there in the, uh, see, he's right there in the end zone, right in center field. And uh, McPherson with uh, Sarasota. The other Riverview <laughs> and East Bay, Lakeland, Auburndale, Booker, a, a tough schedule as they always play. But that gets them ready for the playoffs. Star Durbant and uh, Helm up there. Christian on the defensive line for the Kings, putting a lot of pressure on, on A.D. McPherson. Here he's getting a little bit more. A.D. throw it down, wide open. Completes it to Travis Lip, and boy, he led him perfectly, and Lip had a little pocket there on the right side, and A.D. put it right where he had to. AD looks the pass, now rolling out. He's got a first down, he's got more. And McPherson picks up first down yardage. That's just an impossibility to stop. Manatee, you have to give him credit, had all the receivers covered, which is a job in itself. But then what do you do about McPherson if he decides to And uh, he makes something happen. From the 31. Wide open once again, he's got him. Touchdown, Jaworski Pollock with the 31-yard grab. And Southeast extends the lead to 13 to nothing, awaiting the point after. We're at the 704 mark here in quarter number one. And thus far, boy oh boy, McPherson putting on a show. He really is. Low out in this game. Torrance here, here Washington, here he is right here, right there in the middle. You see that block? He just knocks the guy right out of there and gives McPherson the opportunity to throw the ball. So he's uh, uh, six foot, stands about 206 pounds. That's Washington. I don't know. He doesn't look that big to me. Second down at 10. McPherson throws sideline, completes. Down the sideline goes James Shelley. He's got good blocking. And he'll be taken out inside the 10. Boy, oh, boy. That may have been the best screen setup that I've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, he caught the Canes uh, napping real bad over there and and uh, Shelley he just uh, I mean he he is just totally wide open and I mean, there's nobody 25 30 yards over here uh, here he comes right down all along see it takes all this time before you see any anybody able, able to get close to him and he's got blocking right out front there uh, finally Seth White number 54 pay for that is they're down in here around the two yard line. takes a low snap lobs it wide open in the end zone touchdown that is Fred Spad open in the right corner of the end zone, and the Seminoles put six more and more. First down, yardage gained by Torrance Washington. Fifteen to go, looking, looking, McPherson. Now the pocket throws downfield, hangs it up. Oh, completes it to Span. Span was wide open. And for Manatee, 
Ed Dawes went over and almost was able to tip it away, but perfect pass, right to span, big yardage. I don't know what she's doing. I mean, and he just throws that baby up there, finds Span, who's behind the coverage there, and uh, Span makes another nice catch on the night, bails them out and gets them up into great field position. Now they're into hurricane territory. Walker waiting to snap. Oh, gets it off. Good rush put on. Nikita Rutland in there. Up, off to the races. Here goes Lip. Lip down the sideline and will be taken out of bounds. He's a gutsy wide receiver, and he's also a gutsy return man. He takes this thing, hits straight for the sideline, the near sideline, avoids a couple of cane tackles right there, and then just sheer guts right up until he's forced out of bounds. But there's a penalty. Well, McPherson. Now we'll try to put some points on the board as Manatee has gotten within seven, and here they go. And take it out of bounds after a big gator. James Shelley, and just like that, here come the Seminoles. Boy, the receiver doesn't have to do anything, but just run right straight up. That's what he does. He just comes straight downfield, gets a great block there from an unknown Seminole. Didn't get the number on it, unfortunately, but until C.J. Moore comes up and makes the stop, that's a, that's a big uh, catch and run by the Seminoles. Handoff goes to Shelley. Uh, check that. That's Washington. And Washington picks up about 12. Does he do? Just shifts right out to his left and outruns everybody. Well, you don't teach that. That's just a gift. That's a God-given gift right there for to be able to run instinctively. Another new set of downs. I think this will, uh, he went and saw this video. Uh, we'll get back a minute. Here's the handoff. He's in. Well, towards Washington in the end zone, at eight yards. We see uh, Washington carrying again. Look at that big hole up there that line gives him, though. I mean, you got to be impressed with that. And uh, he takes the, the rest. Of Southeast is used to being here. They're used to being in the playoffs. They've been here year after year after year. Uh, Riverview getting into the playoffs. This is a little unique for them. It's only a three-year program. Mm -hmm. And uh, since 1998, that's when they started football here, and they've done remarkably well. Indeed, they have, as we see the Seminoles taking the field. And we talk about the Riverview Sharks. Well, watch him. He's just his pattern is short, right out there in, in space. Turns around, picks up the uh, ball from McPherson. McPherson hits him with a perfect pass, and uh, he's in for the first. Again, McPherson looking to throw. He's going to run this one. Gets across the 40. Let's see. And 10. The Seminoles need to move the chains. Ooh. Completed. Shelly, <laughs> touchdown, <laughs> 54 yards, <laughs> and Shelly is in the end zone. Well, that's having sweet feet right there, James Shelly. Looks like he's, he's going to get the first down easily, but looks like he'll be tackled. Instead, he just kind of tippy toes right over the defender. There you see McPherson's got him spotted. Throws a little soft touch pass. Shelly on the run, never breaks stride. Looks like it'd be tackle right there, but uh, neatly skips over the defender and into the end zone. So they knows have come back and tied it up. Sensing that they could push one in here and take control of the game. At least early control of the game. Out of the gun, long count. McPherson looking, looking. Now has to scramble. Still looking downfield, looking to throw. Now he's going to run it. First down and more, and McPherson still going. Goes There's out. no running backs, nobody back there at all to help A.D. McPherson, and you see the line kind of gives away there, blocking breaks down on him a little bit, so he has to tuck it in and take it. Watch him stay inbound here. Looks like he's going to go out, stays in, picks up another three or four yards. McPherson with good time, throws across the middle, and a crowd completed. Travis Lip, I believe, from the gun. Goes over, oh, touchdown. Beautiful. Travis Lip in the left side of the end zone for a nine-yard touchdown, and the Seminoles put six more on the board. See, A.D. McPherson spots him, and uh, Lip into coverage, able to hold on for the touchdown. Travis Lip has really been a star for the Seminoles. The kick, the Ross return, and then the uh, face mask penalty. They got great field position, but those guys, uh, that, that's just a good one. Running play. at its best there. 
McPherson has time, rolling out, looking, looking. Throws downfield to Span, completed to Span on the 38, and Span goes forward to the 36 yard line. All the time, like he has uh, most of the night, Span spots him, uh, sees Span come back to him and catch the ball. Covered very, very well, but picks up another first down. Thinking field goal here. They want to put this in the end zone, and they're trying to right there he now. Is. He's got him. And Whoa! Go. Touchdown! Fred Span, Fred Span in the end zone on a 31 yard pass from McPherson. Wide open. And Southeast takes the lead. Was that fast or what? Man, they came back and up scoring about two minutes. Well, what, about a minute? Mm -hmm. About a minute, actually, they scored. Fred Span really being the workhorse there, catching two big passes. Perfect throw. Fred Spann got everybody beat in the end zone. Uh, Jaworski Pollock just floats out there to the side a little bit. Let's see if he pumps this one and draws a bit. Yep. A little bit. Goes long. Got him again. Man. Him. There you go. That is beautiful. On the two-yard line. Ricky McPherson showing you that brilliant arm of his. Pumps just like you called it, Ed. Spots Fred Spann right there at the 10-yard line, about seven or eight. Fred looking over, back up over his head, catches it and got it down to about the one. And also Crawford underneath there to help him out. McPherson, the lateral to Pollock. Pollock down the sideline. Jaworski, Pollock in the end zone. 56 yards, and this one's going to belong to the Seminoles. Seminoles on fire here in the third quarter. The lateral to... Pollock and uh, it's just that speed outside he outruns everybody into the end zone but I love what they're doing the Pollock scored Washington Lip Shelley everybody on the action going for two and in the end zone is Shelley for the two-point conversion add two more 33 14 the Seminoles or McPherson may just keep it nope you're right now the pitch goes back to Shelley Shelly's got a first down. Shelly's still going. Shelly is at the 20-yard line and down at the 19. Is that a nice play call or what? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Tonight, McPherson has lined up underneath the center. You see him trying to strip the ball from Shelly after he receives the handoff rather than tackle him. And uh, he holds on to the ball and keeps on going. See if McPherson fakes the handoff and goes around end. Nope, he just hands off. And he does not make it. No signal yet. Touchdown. Yep. Just barely makes it. James Shelley in the end zone on a one-yard run. Shelley's in there. 33rd quarter. But uh, the Southeast Seminoles have really opened things up here since they've return back to the field from the locker room. I think you put it best. They're on fire. Uh, Jaworski Pollock, uh, uh, Travis Lip, Fred Spann, Shelley, when they, even when they uh, throw to uh, him out of the backfield. Lob into the corner. Oh, he got him. <laughs> we just talked about him. Jaworski Pollock in the end zone. Got a 15-yard pass, and boy, oh, boy. Well, there's a, just another example right there. We talked about the receivers, and then you got the quarterback that can hit them. But uh, they, they just, you know, they're, they're dependent upon one. Combined 211 wins that combined five state championships. These guys are good. Now, let's first start with the, the visiting team, the Seminoles, the guys in blue and orange, if you can figure that one out. The Seminoles are led by one of the most electrifying players to come through this state since a guy that probably played for Southeast a couple years ago, Peter Warwick, Adrian McPherson. He is the quarterback. He is the trigger man. And he's a legitimate 6'4 and runs a legitimate 4'5. And the guy runs this offense to perfection. A lot of shotgun. 90% of the time, they'll be in shotgun. And as you look at the numbers, 1,900 70 through the air and he rushes for about 59 a game too so he gets it done not only with his arm and with his feet but he's very heady too Sean just a coach on the field that Wilson he had a heck of a game one week ago McPherson steps up completes it to Dorsky pull off 
and Pollock knocked out of bounds at the 45. Terrence Wilson pushed him out of bounds, and that's what McPherson can do. You can have him trapped, but he has a very calming ability to step around the pocket and find his man. And that's why this defensive front of the Lakeland Dreadnoughts has to stay in their rush lanes. They can't get pushed past like you saw right there. Williams got pushed past him. He steps underneath and hits his man underneath. Jaworski Pollock, water bucket again, throwing all kinds of things here early in Lakeland. Lots of wrinkles. McPherson gets it out to Torrance Washington. Washington tripped up, probably slightly short of a first down. It was Adam Clayton with the tackle, and they've gone to Torrance Washington a lot early, and this might be a surprise to the Dreadnoughts. Well, it's a surprise to the Dreadnoughts, but the Seminoles knew that they could count on this guy. Torrance Washington has been out with a bruised ankle for what seems like forever, and he even had a couple game suspension for discipline problems. But Coach Meckley told me last night that next to Adrian McPherson, he could have the biggest impact on how far the bug type guy Little quick guy, you don't really have to block for him. You just have to get in somebody's way, which is what Travis Lip does down the field. And Jaworski picks up a nice turn. McPherson throws, completes it to James Shelley. Shelley will be out to the 25 and have enough for a Southeast first down. Even when they're buried under the, their own goalpost, they come out firing. Good job of finding the sticks by Shelley, number seven, the back. Very dangerous coming out of the backfield, but even better. Look at the presence on number five, Adrian McPherson. You can't tell me this guy hasn't been in the big games before. Here we are early in this huge game, enemy territory, but Sean, we said it in the open, he's been in a lot of huge games and even more pros. Guys are in the NBA right now. McPherson, he's going to keep it. And he's going to pick up about nine. Flip date as well. At number 11, Harry in the handoff, not quite sure if, if Shelley was supposed to get it, but Adrian McPherson said, I'll take care of the defense. Go up against the mighty Adrian McPherson. And on the final play of the first quarter, Jaworski Pollock calls it in at the 22-yard line. McPherson to Jaworski Pollock, and the Seminoles, they're right back in this one as they go deep. Sean Fuller with the coverage, but it was too much Jaworski Pollock and too much Adrian McPherson. The Dreadnoughts lead this one 7-0, but Jaworski Pollock has the Seminoles in striking. As they like to call him number 23, Travis Lip. Right across the middle and good coverage, just there a step early. Pollack, he jumps, but he's going to be knocked out at the one. Showing some ups, Jaworski Pollack. Sky towards the pylon, but he's knocked out of bounds. There's so many things they can do with this offense, and here they try to run a little bubble screen to Pollock. You guys are supposed to be watching me, not playing with the ball. Don't let that thing Look at this guy. You can't tell me they don't have some guys that can make some big plays wearing the orange and blue. Look like a 110-meter hurdler just jumping over the hurdle. McPherson going to try to sneak it in. And they're going to award the ball to the Southeast Seminoles. They're going to award McPherson a touchdown in one of the more bizarre plays. You'll see McPherson dove forward very close to a touchdown. And it looked as if the ball might have popped out, but the officials say he was over the goal line. The ball just has to cross the plane. It's hard to see. Oh, Chauncey Clark just ripping the ball away from Adrian McPherson. Oh, wow. And throw the football to him. You send in as a defensive coach, especially when you get up to college and in the pros, you watch the personnel that's in the game and you match your personnel. You want to get your guys back into it. Travis Lip hauls in the pass, pick up of about five, brings up second and five for the Seminoles. This wide receiving core for the Southeast Seminoles might be the most potent in the state of Florida. In their one and a half years playing together, this being Jaworski, Pollock, Travis Lip, and Fred Spann, they have 3,400 combined yards and 41 touchdowns. James Shelley, the tailback, gets the handoff. 
be about a hair short of a first down. Good job blocking up front. And just as on the other side of the football, you keep him honest by maybe throwing in a pass or two and to get a good hit on Adrian McPherson. He's so shifty. He's sm so smart. He knows what to do. And here you see he waits to the last second and see it, but very barely. Chauncey Clark and, and these guys aren't jumping on defense. They're taught to do that. You put your hand down and you boom, you pop real quick. And when you're as quick as Chauncey, you're going to be a little bit touchy on the offense. Jaworski Polak wide open. Touchdown Seminoles. Seen McPherson hits him. That makes the score 21 to 12, and you'd have to think, James, it's two-point conversion time. What a big fourth down conversion. Again, Travis Lip filling in for the field goal kicker, and so they will go for two. It's the throw, looking for Polak, and he gets it. The fade route. Polak with a wonderful catch right over the shoulder. Very difficult. Probably more difficult than it looks. And the Seminoles cut the lead to 21-14 for the Dreadnoughts. And we see back-to-back -back just pretty touch on the football by A.D. McPherson. There he hits the touchdown. And here you go, the two-point conversion. Polak scores eight points in about six seconds, and he gets the Seminoles back into it. Peter Warwick, not a bad athlete. McPherson throws, he's gonna complete it to Jaworski Polak, and Polak knocked out of bounds at the 30. And Travis Lip does a good job of coming back and helping his quarterback out with this big block. Watch Travis Lip, watch this hustle coming across the field. Boom, Travis Lip splitting lips. Play by Travis. McPherson throws, Pollock wide open. And he will go untouched into the end zone. And the seven. Can't quite see it right now, but there you see there in the backfield, or in the back of the defensive secondary, Chris Strickland. Here's a look at it. Chris Strickland has got to respect Jaworski Pollock out there lined up wide. It's almost as if he didn't know he was out there, but number seven, being the furthest man to the sidelines, has got to stay on number 11, or at least stay. But that's what you get from Chris Strickland and Kareem Taylor. And the onside, onside kick. kick. The onside kick. The ball's still around, and the Seminoles look to have recovered. They go to the quick kick. The Dreadnoughts were not expecting it. They run up to the ball, they put it on the ground, and then they... And usually will they split out and spread out before they do the kickoff. Turn and kick. What a great onside kick. Excellent job of pulling it off a lot. McPherson rolling, he throws, completes it to lift, but it'll be short of a first down. Territory, like we said earlier. McPherson throws. It's caught, Travis Slip. Lip doing a tightrope back on the same side, easier side for McPherson to throw to his right side, being the right-handed quarterback. And look at that, he's only got to get one foot down of the trouble and turn it up and make something really out of what was nothing. But Adrian McPherson shifting his way, and then you know what? Hey, we need to kill some clock. I'm going to get to the sidelines. You see, he had a little bit of a hole. He maybe could have made a shot in the middle, but great job of getting out of bounds with the football. Washington, the fullback. What's going on around him? The option, the pitch to Shelley. Touchdown, Seminole. Point moments ago from Travis Lip. The Seminoles are now forced to go for two. McPherson throws, and he completes it. Travis Lip making amends. But here, Jay Shelley will do the great gridiron dive across the goal line. And then forced to go for two, McPherson finds Lip. And they have scored 14 unanswered points. Stay with them. Come in at nine and three. Playing teams like Bradenton, Manatee, Riverview, Punta Gorda, Charlotte, Lake Region, Sarasota, and Sarasota, Riverview, Lakeland, Auburndale, Sarasota, Booker, Eaton. Third down, and we'll call it eight. Out of the shotgun. 
Under pressure, firing over the middle, has his receiver, and he's going to be across midfield. That's big number 81, Fred Spam. Came in with 30 catches. Spam, the senior wide receiver at 5'11", with the grab. Well, we'll watch the Knowles tonight. They like to go over the middle, and when they do, they like to go with Fred Spann. This time, Fabrizio coming from the outside. Looked like he was going to get to the quarterback. Put a hit on McPherson, but he delivered the football to Spann, and Spann just... Across the midfield stripe again out of the shotgun. McPherson spreading the field. With plenty of time underneath. He's going to have a man wide open. Gets it to number three out there, Torrance Washington. Washington will be very close and will have a first down to about the 37-yard line of the Seminole Warhawks. Washington, the big fullback, giving the giving Seminole Warhawks a little bit more problems to think about now as they put the fullback downfield and get him just to go for a simple pass over the middle, kind of acting like a tight end, although this team, this, this offense is used to live and die by the run when they had Darrell McMillan, who wore number seven. Now they have James Shelley, and just a couple seasons ago. Five right here out of... Straight back to Ferrison, looking, looking, going to dump it off to his fullback, and a big hit. Very close to the first down, Justin Lumpkin making the hit, depending on the spot. I think somebody's going to get a favorable and spot. It will be Southeast. They get it. Nice job this time of McPherson. Tippy-toeing out of the pocket, and Washington hangs on to that football after he was led for touchdown passes, eclipsing Kenny Kelly's 77 attempt at Tampa is 81 in his career. Under pressure now, McPherson trying to get to the outside. He's going to run and be cut off by Jackson, but he finds a receiver wow. at the goal line, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Travis Lip, and that is just the athleticism of an Adrian McPherson buying time. You saw number three, DeQuell Jackson cut him off. He pulled up and fired a strike to Lip for the touchdown. Adrian McPherson gets out of the pocket. Mess right there. Looked like the DeQuest Gully was bearing down on him, and Lip makes a great adjustment, comes back for the football to his quarterback, and then you see his ability get into the end zone just barely gets in but hey it's all good 15 tackles here in the postseason and he catches up right there and hauls him down straight back with time gonna swing it out this way to Shelly Shelly with a nice little move across the 20 out across the 25 he gets the yardage back play developing McPherson looking downfield get the defense to go down with his receivers then Shelley good receiver worked on his receiving skills this offseason with Reggie Davis and Doc Pollard out of the University of Florida said he really out these does they like to cross you up they can run the speed option here with Adrian McPherson they'll eventually run the hurry up offense and of course they love to spread you out that Kickers get excited, it's usually because they're doing a good job. First and 10 now for McPherson and Southeast from their 20. Going to toss the ball to Shelly to the short side. Shelly's got the corner turn. Shelly with good blocking will be out and have a first down. It'll be very close to it. They spot him right near the first down marker. That's excellent blocking up front. I mean, not only do they have a solid offensive line that protects the quarterback and can open up running routes, but you're going to see the receivers downfield. They can block as well. They don't just catch passes down here. Look downfield, you see Jaworski Pollock there blocking his man. Exception's coming in to this for high school receiver. His nickname is Jaws. That's because he eats up the secondary, and you can see what he can do. He's got the speed as well, 4.58 speed. He was originally in the regular season, number two in the state, receiving behind Deshaun Platt out of, out of Charlotte. Now Gully chasing him. Going to throw it downfield. Has his receiver after a big collision and holding on to it is Colin for the first down out near the 43-yard line. What a grab by Pollock as he got popped big time after the reception. Well, the secondary could cover no longer. You can see now that they're putting three different blockers on DeQuest Gully and just a great hit downfield, but the catch is even more remarkable as now Southeast operates. Signals now because the receivers cannot hear the verbal signals. With time stepping up, going to fire it deep, has his man out here for the touchdown. Jaworski Pollock, 43-yard strike from Adrian McPherson, beat the double coverage of Justin Lumpkin and Danielle Williams, who again did not run through the football, and McPherson made a pay for it with a strike. As we mentioned, they were just a play away, and this time Jaws just runs through the double coverage. He has the speed out there, the 4.58 speed. Now, granted, Lumpkin and Williams are quick as well, but that did get some points on the board. Right now, they're not even going to go on. Third down and nine. Jackson has a man open down the middle and broken up and intercepted. They're going to have a marker down. It's intercepted by Nikita Rutland. Rutland across midfield, or looking for number five, actually, with the ball. McPherson, the quarterback, and he's going to take it for the touchdown, but there are two markers down. 
Adrian McPherson thinks he has a touchdown. There's now three markers on the field. So it's become flag day. Bunch. Very soft contact on Lumpkin. Lumpkin that's a, that's got a, up. To, that's a ticky tack penalty right there. Lumpkin I mean, got up immediately geez. wanting the penalty. But you're right. When that's, you use ticky tack, that's a little bit more soft than I would use. That's flag football there. You're going to call that a penalty. Look how wide open that is right there. Brown and he did, just, didn't just slip a tackle. He slipped out of DeQuell Jackson's arms, which many people do not do. No, they don't. He had 150 tackles. First and 15. Pearson with plenty of time over the middle late. He's going to have his receiver that span breaking some tackles and finally brought down by Lumpkin. Now he had made it down the sideline for a big gainer. What a nice play for Span. Span came in with 30 receptions. A lot of real estate for McPherson and a lot of time. Span finding the hole in the defense and then gets out of about two or three tackles. Shows you how these guys can run where the blitz is recognized. McPherson gets rid of it accordingly. Finds his dump off man. It is Shelley. Shelley. Second down and four. Again, the back's in the eye formation. Going to run the option. Pull back. Going to keep the ball. Is McPherson. McPherson in the secondary inside the 15. I think he pulled it. Not on his head. And here you can see the fake. And there goes McPherson. Just casual. Running far sideline. I'm going to pick up a few yards. Has the blocking out there. Join the receivers to the short side. McPherson under pressure, going to dump it off on the screen. He's got it set up to his fullback, Washington. He's going to be down near first down yard. It's inside the five. They set it up beautifully, dumped it off to Torrance Washington, who at 216 pounds, Eric, is quick and a fine receiver. He's got good hands. Washington, and if you're going to blitz, you have to get to the quarterback. Otherwise, that hot receiver's out there, and it was Washington. The Knowles were ready for it. Now they have a chance center. Second and goal from the one. Number three again, this time left side into the end zone for the touchdown. Torrance Washington with the one-yard touchdown run. 7.35 left third quarter, and Southeast has regained the lead at 20-17. Washington that time just falling behind Dave. Spot the injury here. Fabrizio is going to come on your screen right now. Land awkwardly on a spun on. Beats Adrian McPherson very well. They read each other very well. And McPherson, you could see his decision making that time. He looked like he might have wanted to gone to the deep corner patterns to two receivers, but he said, hey, little lip. Second and three. Underneath has Pollock wide open inside the 20. Pollock inside the 10. Finally spun down at about the 7. It will be first and goal from there for the Southeast Seminoles. I tell you what, Jaws, the yards after the catch are so crucial for any receiver. And right there, you just saw what he could do with the football. Here goes the well, offense trying to wear the Seminole War off defense out. They've got him winded after running up and down the field like that. First and goal from the seven. McPherson with time. Dumps it off to Washington in the flat. Washington breaks the tackle, and he is into the end zone for the seven-yard touchdown. Torrance Washington with his second touchdown of the second half. And the Seminoles of Southeast now lead by the score of 27 to 17, 253 left third quarter. McPherson has to be his final target, and it is Washington. Washington getting in again, the big fullback, only a junior. Well, we'll take a break. You're watching the high school football game of the week right here on Time Warner's Channel 7. Straight up the middle with Washington, and Washington, big yardage, picks up 11 on the first down to move the chains out to the 36. And you can see over there, Coach Meckley over there telling his teams, keep it up, keep the momentum going. He gets into this game just as much as his kids do. He's been around a couple of state championships, 93 and 94, and almost always to the state semifinals or quarterfinals with his fine team. His two state championship teams. Not too shabby right there. First and 10 from the 36. 
McPherson on the option, keeps it across midfield into the secondary. Look out, he's gone. Adrian McPherson is going to take this one 65 yards for the Bradenton Southeast touchdown. He's still running. And he is excited. They just don't look for him to run that that often. He got to that corner in a hurry and showed his great speed on that six foot four inch frame. He said before the game, it kind of reminds you of Randall Cunningham. Some people may say, well, you know, you might be going to extremes there, but this is a special athlete right here. And he's going places right there. He was going to the end zone. And as of right now, Brian, there's a lot of time left on that clock, but he may be to the road end zone. Looking for Span, completed for Span. Team on the quick out. Span right at the yard marker. It only needs a yard if he just turns around real fast here, but he can't hold his uh, footing, goes out of bounds. A.D. McPherson, when you have him on your team, because he can do everything. There he, on the quarterback keeper, just takes it right over the left side. Tackler's hanging on, takes it up to about the ninth. And a flip now goes to Washington. Left side, a gain of five. Well, what Torrance Washington provides for you in that southeast backfield, even when he isn't carrying the ball or taking the toss like he does right there, the guy's an excellent blocker, and uh, it's uh, mostly dirt, mostly mud. McPherson. Throws out in the flat, completed to Fred Spann. Spann off and running. Spann to the 20. Spann out of bounds. Fred Spann to the 19-yard line. And the South is he's, he just uh, he smells the defender behind him. See, here comes the defender. He turns around, does a little button hook on him, and uh, brings that thing back on down the near side. Out of the gun. A.D. looking to throw, out in the flat, completed out in the flat. Shelley, oh, yeah. off to the races. Shelley down the sidelines, gets to the six-yard line. Coming out of the backfield, he avoids a tackle right there, and it's off to the races, and he almost takes it the full length, almost the length of the of the field here. Watch Shelley just doing some superb running. There you see the big junior running. Says we need seven. Can't say as I blame him. I mean, you know, I said score anyway, but anything. McPherson looking. Tivers went out. He has to get it in the end zone. Oh, yeah. James Shelley in the end zone. And Southeast is on the board. McPherson to Shelley. Boy, oh, boy. What the doctor prescribed here for the Southeast Seminoles. Especially if you can get A.D. McPherson wound up, and that's exactly what he does on that play. On the keeper, getting out 485-pound quarterback that can pretty well name his college. Pitch goes out to Torrance. Got a Washington with it. Going forward, and Torrance Washington with a good pick. Yard line. First down, Southeast. There you go. There you go. He gets outside. He picks up the first down. This is the first football. Blue, this is a blue-collar <laughs> team, I'm telling you, the Southeast Seminoles. AD looks complete. Travis Lip with the ball. Travis Lip. Let's see it again here, Travis. Yeah, nice big, looking pass. Big catch by Travis Lip. You see McPherson lays it right in there at the numbers. And then uh, Travis turns it upfield, picks up another three or four on his own, and almost gets the first down. Comes up just a little bit short. Big play here. 80 yard. Oh, McPherson it. keeps He's it. In there. Whoa. Oh, almost. Inside the two to the one yard line. First and goal for the Seminoles. As they are on the move here in the second. Takes the handoff. Rolls right around right in. Almost takes it into the end zone. Good play call in there by the Knowles coaching staff. Looking to throw, looking to go long. Span open. Fred Span in the end zone. All Fred right. Span on a touchdown, 51 yards. Southeast is on the board again. Yes, sir. A.D. McPherson. 
Well, this will break your heart if you're St. Thomas because you see him coming again. A.D. McPherson throwing the perfect pass. Fred Spann never breaks stride. Watch him. Runs right under it, right down the field. Look at that. What a gorgeous pass. Fred Spann into the end zone. Southeast Seminole. If anyone can do it, they can. We've seen them do it. Out of the gun from the end zone. They've got to watch a penalty here. Ooh. Almost a safety. A.D. gets out. Looking to throw. A.D. is going to just keep it. And off he goes. Let's <laughs> see where they marked that boy. That almost was a game ending. A.D. McPherson. Yeah, he's nearly sacked in the end zone. Look at him. Motion his receiver to come to him. Good job, A.D. McPherson. McPherson. Throws out in the flat, complete. Travis Lip. Please, as the Seminoles move the ball. AD spotting Travis Lip. He's wide open here on the near side. Snap. Little pitch goes to Terrence Washington. Here we go. Washington moving the ball. First down and more. Washington gets the ball across midfield. McPherson with time going long. Yeah! Does he have it? Yes! Inside the one yard line. Fred Spann with the big catch and it's first and goal for the Southeast Seminoles. Just what they needed. Yes, sir. This is the second time that he's connected with Fred Spann long. Hits him for about 40, uh, 49, 49 yards right there. And uh, what a great catch by Fred Spann, right in the middle of all that. Takes it on the yeah, first down and gets it. Four Hank, player of the year. The senior quarterback for Southeast High School. He completed 201 with 328 passes. He threw for 3,427 yards, 40 touchdowns, and rushed for 764 yards on the ground. Adrian McPherson, the Dairy Farmers Class 4A, player of the year. The 5A player of the year, Jerome Carter. Jerome is a senior tailback, defensive back for Columbia High School. He averaged 9.8 yards per carry. They got 29 passes for seven touchdowns on offense. He had 77 tackles on defense and was an All-American this year. Jerome Carter, the Dairy Farmers Class 5A player of the year. The 6A player of the year, Mike Gilliam, a senior running back for Lincoln High School. He averaged 10.1 yards per carry. He rushed for 2,577 yards with 31 touchdowns. Mike Gilliam, the Dairy Farmers Class 6A player of the year. And the 2000 Dairy Farmers Mr. Football Award winner, Adrian McPherson from Southeast High School. to all of our coaches and athletes for another outstanding job in the year 2000. Thank you. Congratulations, buddy. Yes, I got, man. 